In the course materials for this course, you will find this edge fetch API folder. Let's open this into the text editor. And we're gonna open the index.html. We're gonna open this with live server. I'm gonna make this smaller. So go live. And this is going to be a, a similar example as we did have earlier. And right here it should be JSON and JSON API. So basically we have this dot data. We're gonna see how you can use the fetch API to access this file, txt file. Then we have JSON, we're gonna access this employees JSON. And finally we have, we have JSON API. I'm gonna show you how to access a REST API using fetch API. So this is going to be a really similar uh, example as we have when we were working with Ajax. So then we're gonna open the JS and we're gonna open the app.js. First, we're gonna see the example using the load data. We're gonna open the button uh, one. So this is going to load this data.txt. So basically the fetch API is going to replace Ajax, but for me it was important that you learn also Ajax. So we're gonna create a document, get element by ID, we're gonna add button and we're gonna attach an event listener. This is going to be a click and we're gonna load a text a function. So we're gonna add load text. We're gonna call this function uh, like this, load text. And we're gonna see the difference between Ajax and the fetch API. So right here in the body of the function, we need to add fetch. Fetch is going to be the function where you need to pass the URL. So in this case, it's going to be data.txt. Then right after this, we need to use a promise. So we're gonna use dot then in order to access to the data into this file. So we're gonna dot then. This is going to execute a function and this is going to contain a response. So we can uh, basically, we can console log this response and see what we have so far. So inspect this and open the console. And something really quick, let me add JS right here because I added this into a folder. So again, open the app.js. Now click here on load data and you can see that we basically get a response. It says response and you can see it says basic. We have some other information. You can see here we have the status, we have basic. So this is going to be basically the response. Something really important when you are working with the fetch API is how you are going to res uh, return the response. So open this proto and here you can see we have a lot of different methods. So for example, you can return this uh, response as JSON in case that you have JSON. But here on the bottom, you can see we have text and this is a function. So we can console.log this and add dot text and save this and click here on load data. And now you can see we have a promise pending. So always when you see something like this, promise pending, promise successful and others, that means that you need to add another dot then. So first we're gonna return this because we need to access this in, into the next line so we're gonna return response dot text and right here i'm going to add another then then like this function and this is going to contain some data or the response so we're gonna console.log the data so click here again and now you can see we have data from a txt file so when you are working with the fetch api first you hit, you have to give a return value normally is going to be text or JSON, but you can see we have something like this. Then we have a second dot then, and basically this is going to be the data. Now that we have specified how we want to return this data. So we can add something here. We can add, for example, document get element by ID to print this into HTML. We're gonna add result because uh, this ID is, uh, dips di this div is using the ID result. So we're gonna add this right here and we're gonna add inner HTML is going to be equals to data. So save this, click here on load data and now you can see we have data from a TXT file. 
So let's say that we misspell the URL and we add load data. You can see that we have this error, but you can also use dot catch. And this is going to give you a more detailed error. So it's going to be a function. It's going to take an error and we can console log this error. So save this, click here on load data, and you can see that we have cannot get and the name of the file. So catch is going to be running every time that a promise has failed. But the most important thing here is that when you are using the fetch API, you should always specify the return value. It's going to be text or JSON almost all the time. And then you have to give a second dot then to access the actual values. So you can see that when you are working with the fetch API, the code is it looks more organized. So we're going to use the fetch API for the rest of the course because this is going to be the new standard and is going to replace Ajax. So in the next video, we're going to see how we can read this JSON. It's going to be this second button that says JSON. So let's continue working in the next video.